Course 3, Lesson 62, we are looking at inequalities and being able to solve and graph these inequalities on a number line. So first of all, when we look at some math problems, sometimes we can have multiple answers. For example, if I say I'm thinking of a number from 1 to 10, I could th be thinking of a lot of different numbers, a lot of possibilities there. We need to be able to have a way to graph these possibilities. So let's try one. Christina is thinking of a number. If she doubles the number, the product is greater than 4. We need to write an inequality to show this problem, and then we're going to solve it and graph it. So if she is thinking of a number and she doubles the number, let's say her number is x. Well, if she doubles it, that means we have 2x. So we know that that number is greater than 4. So um, if we think of some possibilities for the number that she's thinking of, we could say, oh, x could be 6. She could have said 6 because that would make it greater than 4. Or maybe she could have even said 3. 3 times 2 is greater than 4. Or she could have said something like 2.5. That would be greater than 4 if I double it. So on and so forth. The only one that we for sure know doesn't work is something like if x is 2. 2 times 2 is not greater than 4, but how do we show that on a number line that we want to be as close to 2 as possible? Even 2.0001 would work, but we can't have 2. Well, first of all, the inequality to show it, we would have just x is greater than 2. We want all of the possibilities that are greater than 2. This comes from when we solve our inequality for our variable. In this case, divide by 2. We're going to solve our inequalities basically like we solve our equations. In the future, we'll have a couple restrictions, but for right now, we just solve it like normal. So we have x is greater than 2. And that greater than sign actually gets shown on a graph with an open dot right on the number it describes. What this is saying is that we can't have the number that we're on. We can't have 2, but we can have anything greater than it. And we show those that are greater than it with a line. So when we have greater than or less than signs, we use an open dot. When we have greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, we have a closed dot. Because that equal to part of the inequality, that bar that's underneath, tells me that I can have that equal to it. I can have that number. So we show that with a closed dot, like we're actually pinpointing that number. Let's try another one. Jackie is thinking of a number. If she subtracts 3 from it, the difference is less than 8. Write an inequality, solve, and graph. So we say if she has a number x and we subtract 3 from it, that difference is less than 8. Well, let's say we're, we were just to try to graph it as it is right now, rather than trying to solve it and then graphing it. Well, that would mean we would say, all right, less than 8. Looks like we have an open dot, and we want the numbers that are less than 8. So we check one of our solutions. Let's say um, we check something like 7. Um, so in order to do this, we would say, all right, 7 minus 3, is that less than 8? Yeah, that's great. That'll work. 4 is less than 8. But I wonder if we're missing any possibilities. We would say, do we think that 9 might work? 9 minus 3, is that less than 8? Yes. So why isn't it part of our solution system? It should be, is the answer. It should be. And we're going to change this in just a second after we solve it. Because we must solve the inequality first to capture all of the different possibilities. We don't want to be missing something. So in this case, we add 3 to each side to solve this, and we get x is less than 11. We can actually have numbers all the way until 11 that will work for this. But we can't include 11 because 11 isn't going to work. 11 minus 3 is equal to 8, but we want something that's less than 8. So we use a circle to describe it. A circle with all of the numbers that are less than 11 uh, filled in with our line. All right, solve and graph the solution. So just like an equation, we are going to solve this for x. So I'm going to subtract 1 and get 3x is less than or equal to 6. Divide by 3, and we get x is less than or equal to 2. 
meaning any number, including 2, or anything less than it, will work in this equation. So I put a filled in dot on 2 and point to the left, showing I want the answers that are lower than 2 and including 2. That's what that less than or equal sign means. All right, let's try this one. And I'm going to write it out a little differently so it's easier to see. x divided by 7 minus 4 is greater than or equal to 7. So we add 4 on each side, and we get x divided by 7 is equal to 11. Or sorry, greater than or equal to 11. And then, since we've divided by 7, I'm going to undo that by multiplying by 7. And I get x is greater than or equal to 77. I'm not going to use this number line. It's way too small. So I make my own number line with 77 in the middle, with at least three or four numbers on there. And I'm saying any number that is equal to 77 or greater will work. So I put a closed dot pointing to the right, showing that 77 or anything, even just marginally bigger, will work. All right, let's come up with a, an equation for this one. Vincent goes to the store with 20 bucks. He needs to buy a notebook for four bucks. He notices, though, that packages of notebook paper are on sale for two dollars. Different type of paper. Write and solve an inequality to show the number of packages of paper he could buy if he also buys his regular notebook. So what we're saying is, if I want his total, since he only has 20 bucks, I want his total over here to be less than or he could spend all of it, so less than or equal to $20. And we say, we know he's going to buy that notebook. So whatever we come up with for how much notebook paper, he's going to have to add $4 to his total cost because of that notebook. Then we're going to say, each pack of notebook paper is $2. So we end up um, seeing that our inequality is 2x plus 4 is less than or equal to 20. That will tell me x, how many packs of paper he can buy. Okay, all of the different possibilities. So in order to do this, I'm going to solve it very quickly. 2x is less than 16, so x is less than or equal to 8. Meaning that to graph this, I am going to have a closed on on 8 because he can buy 8 packages of paper. He'll have just enough money and any amount less than that. Okay, And yes, theoretically, we couldn't go past um, 0 into the negatives. But we could go 0 all the way through 8. All right, just a couple more examples. So I'm going to solve these and graph them. I'm going to add 2 to each side and get that 5 is less than or equal to x. And it may be really tempting right now to say... All right, I'm going to graph this 5 in the middle and a closed dot on 5. And it looks like I want a less than, so I'm going to go this way. But if we look at this and we say, what are the solutions in my set? It looks like 4 would be in the set, but 5 is not less than or equal to x4. So when we graph our inequalities, we really do want our variable on the left side of the inequality. And in order to do that, I need to switch everything that I see. I'm going to put the x on the left, the 5 on the right, and switch the inequality symbol to say that it's a greater than or equal to. So that when I graph this, I actually can say x, my number, okay, it needs to be greater than or equal to 5. All of those bigger numbers. That makes a lot more sense in the case that we have. So that when we plug it into our original, let's say we chose uh, 6, we could say 3 is less than or equal to 6 minus 2, which is true. 3 is less than or equal to 4. So we do have the correct solution set. And the last one, same idea. Subtract 10 on each side and I get um, 8 is greater than or equal to x, but I need my variable on the left side. So I say x is less than or equal to 8. And I can graph that by having 8, 7, 9, a closed dot, and I want the ones that are smaller, less than 8. Well, I hope this is helpful for your homework and for studying.